question. So oh, this papers. uh this one is uh this one is summer nineteen and it's it's question paper for one. Okay. So I'm going to start from the last question, which is which is question number nine. Uh, starting starting with the first question, he's talking about uh, hydrolysis. Do you remember this is a, again a very typical question that often comes about hydrolysis of chlorine-related compounds? So this one this one over here, uh, I just I just open the notes for this one, uh, or uh, I'll explain it over here. What's what happens is uh, this first one is a halogenoalkane, so it's got a it's a primary halogenoalkane. And the molecule is polar. The carbon has a slight positive charge. The Cl has a slight, slight negative charge. Uh, let me write this as CH3. Just a second. I said, let me write that, that as CH3. So what happens is that uh, you need, uh, this one is, is nucleophilic substitution. TK, this thing is given over here. One second, let me open this. You've got SN1 and you've got SN2 mechanisms. Just a second. In the second part. I said, so, so this one is hydrolysis. One second. This one is this is summer 1941. I just so this one, I'll just go through and revise the, the whole hydrolysis thing. Uh, just one second. Take the whole hydrolysis thing. Uh, remember the first, uh, the, these three compounds, you've got uh, chlorobenzene, no hydrolysis. Halogenoalkanes, you do have hydrolysis, but that requires NOH, aqueous, and reflux. And you've got acyl chlorides, vigorous hydrolysis. So you need to know the reasons for each one of them. Why doesn't chlorobenzene hydrolyze? Because uh, there's a lot of electrons over here. The benzene electron cloud and the lone pairs on Cl, they overlap. And the OH minus one nucleophile kind of gets repelled by that because that is also negatively charged. So uh, there is no hydrolysis in that particular case. Uh, halogenoalkanes, that is a polar carbon atom. So the carbon has a slight positive charge. You've got SN2 mechanism for a primary one because in the primary halogenoalkane, the carbon has a very strong positive charge. Uh, it's very polar bond. So the OH minus one directly attacks it and eventually the seal gets knocked out. The SN1 mechanism is for tertiary halogenoalkanes where the carbon uh, over here, because it's surrounded by large groups, it doesn't have a very big positive charge. So the CL quickly breaks away and then the OH minus one approaches this carbocation and then ends up bonding with it. So tertiary carbocations are kind of more stable, which is why uh, they are formed. Uh, this is all described over here. And then you've got acyl chlorides. Acyl chlorides, remember, uh, have a very strong positive carbon atom because they're bonded to two very electronegative atoms. And in their case, you've got a very vigorous reaction. You don't even need any which water molecules are going to be very strongly attracted to this carbon positive. And there's going to be a vigorous reaction. Fumes of HCl, this is going to happen with cold water, even with cold water. So you're going to have a very, very vigorous reaction. So stay to explain the relative rates. Uh, so this is going to be the slowest. And you're going to explain over here, this is, this is the one with benzene that the lone pairs on Cl overlap with benzene spy electron cloud. And when they do that, the CCL bond becomes really strong. So it becomes, it becomes extremely strong. So the CL lone pairs and uh, the benzene, they're all overlapping and it repels water molecules or repels nucleophiles. I so say you can, 
you can talk about this other one isko main hata do i say you can you can you can uh, you can talk about acyl chloride why is this going to have a very vigorous reaction because the carbon has a very strong po positive charge so the carbon in in this molecule rcocl is bonded to two to two electronegative atoms so positive charge density is large density is large and because of that there is going to be a strong attraction for nucleophiles or strong attraction for for lone pairs from water molecules okay that's that's the explanation but uh, they've given very few lines so it's just a three mark question so i'll i'll just quickly open the the marking scheme for this one as well just to see what were the points a lot of times it's a four mark question and they give you more lines to answer that Okay, but remember this hydrolysis of chlorine-related compounds. That's something that's very important. So you should always, always remember this. So question number nine. The first part. I see over here even uh, uh, P, the p orbital on Cl overlaps with the pi system. So the lone pair on Cl overlaps with the pi electron cloud of benzene. uh or electrons from cl so we did write that and we said that the ccl so no hydrolysis and they just said this one the other one uh as a one mark was for this one so we did write we didn't write the order but we, we i mean we i did tell you the order uh cccocl uh, ccl bond is more electron deficient electron deficient means that it's got a strong positive charge as it is attached to an oxygen atom uh and or the ccl bond is the weaker so it's kind of the same electron deficient means it's got a very strong positive charge density so kind of the same thing so you so any two from this and one mark was for this one so just remember this thing theek okay? hai this is very important now the next one is what is meant by the term weak base uh, uh the previous one is that clear yes or no is this clear yes ji ji as a base is a proton acceptor and uh, weak means partially ionized so a weak base is something that partially ionizes and is a proton acceptor that's it uh, a molecule contains two nitrogen atoms both uh, one second as a molecule contains uh, two nitrogen atoms ye partially to but partially ionized to acids ke liye hoga ni basis ke liye hota na let's say you have nh3 that's a weak base right so when when the lone pairs on nh3 they accept an h plus one right and they did every bond with it what happens to them uh, they become ionized right theek hai the h plus one joins in and uh, it gets a positive one charge right so it is ionized so you use the word ionized for bases as well but they partially okay. ionized which means that they or they going to weakly ionize which means that they not they not going to form a lot of ions theek hai acha now uh, this uh, whatever this is it reacts with hcl a molecule of this contains two nitrogen atoms which can act as a base so both of them can act as a base complete the structure to suggest the product formed in this reaction with hcl so he's saying a molecule contains both of which can act as a base complete the structure uh, to suggest uh, the product formed in this reaction so uh, this one uh, there's an n lone pair and it will accept an h plus one ion so did they draw this molecule earlier i said that's the same one now you have this lone pair as well this one uh, so there's going to be in this one i doubt uh, the lone pair will be able to now they've clearly stated that both of them can act as a base 
both of which can act as a base. This one, so this one also has a lone pair. So it's got uh, two bonds. The third electron is part of the bi-electron system. So that's three electrons, so lone pair left. So I'm just going with what they have stated. I'll just check the market scheme, but they have clearly stated that both of which can act as a base. So both of them, both of them have lone pairs and then they can grab an H plus one ion or attract an H plus one ion. So I'm just going by what they've stated. So let me just quickly check. Uh, so it is, I mean, both of them can act as a base. So why it's, they are, they've drawn two structures. One time it's this one that has accepted an H plus one. The other time it's the, it's the other one. So are we supposed to draw two structures? A molecule contains both of which can act as a base. So basically they've suggested that it could be either one of them or it could possibly be both of them. One of the reasons why I think uh, partially ionized uh, and proton acceptor. Now, can anyone suggest why they haven't, I mean, they've either given the option of this one gaining an H plus one or this one as gaining an H plus one. What I've done is actually incorrect, but can you, can you, uh, can anyone suggest a reason why this one is incorrect? Why are they saying in the marketing scheme that only one of them could accept an H plus one? It's either this one or it's this one. Why not both of them? Any ideas? So due to a weak uh, case, we just have to only one proton. Think it's a, it's a, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, they didn't say that it's a weak base. Did they say it's a weak base? I said it is a weak base though. Uh, but, and even this is still possibly right, TK, but in the Marxism, they've only given one. Now I'll explain the reason. Let's say it gains one H plus one. Now gaining, once it gains one H plus one, the entire molecule has a plus one charge because uh, a neutral molecule ended up gaining an H plus one. So the overall thing has a plus one charge. Now, if something has a plus one charge, gaining another H plus one becomes more difficult because the two things are going to repel each other. So, so usually only one H plus one is gained. I mean, that's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a strict rule, but even you apply the same rule to water as well. Like water can act as a base because it's got two lone pairs. So it can accept an H plus one. But once it accepts an H plus one, there's another lone pair as well. That could possibly accept an H plus one as well. But, but once water gains one H plus one, the whole molecule is now H3O plus one, which is a positive ion. Positive ions would, replace, would repel other positive ions. So I think that's the reason why they've only given one that it's either this one or this one, not both of them, TK. So, but still, even then it's, it's, I think it's still possible, but I'll, I'm just trying to justify what the market scheme is saying that usually it's just going to be one H plus one that is going to be accepted. TK. Is this clear? This thing? Yes. Okay, so the next one is you've got a polyamide such as nylon can be prepared from a monomer that contains both an amine and an acyl chloride functional group. So you can make a polyamide out of it. You need amines and you got uh, you got this thing. Uh, so you're saying draw two repeat units. How do you, so there's CH2, five of them in the middle, and there's going to be serial bond O and CL. And on this side, there is NH2. Now there's going to be, but let me draw the NH2 in this way. Then there's going to be another one, which is uh, exactly the same. It's going to be, you see, draw two repeat units, CH2, five, and C del bond O and CL. And there's going to be NH2. Now what's going to happen is uh, amides are formed because this carbon is very positive and this lone pair uh, is very negative. So they're going to get attracted to each other. And the H and CL will get knocked out. And in the middle, they would they would all join up. So there's going to be an amide link that's going to be formed. The same thing would happen to the other end as well. The CL will be knocked out. The H would be knocked out from this side. Uh, and there's going to be continuation bond. So those are your two repeat units. Uh, and you put an N over here. 
So this thing is getting repeated. That's your amide link. So amides are always formed uh, in this way. So when the nylon sex monomer is hydrolyzed, uh, are broken, bonds are broken and formed. By considering the two steps in the mechanism of the reaction, complete the table by placing one tick. So, so he's talking about hydrolysis. Again, this is, I mean, we did the for this part earlier, so that's done. That's how a polyamide would look like. Again, we've got a Cl-related compound. That's an acyl chloride. And he's talking about the hydrolysis. Remember, it's got a very strong carbon positive. It's going to attract water molecules very, very strongly. So there's going to be there's going to be a strong attraction for for water molecules and their lone pairs. Now, hydrolysis is going to be very vigorous. So I'm, it's the same question. It's just a continuation of the same question. So acyl chlorides, remember this. They have vigorous reaction, even with cold water. Uh, the water molecules are going to get attracted to it. Now, you have to know the mechanism. This mechanism is in your course. What happens is this is known as nucleophilic addition elimination. What happens is that the lone pair uh, gets very strongly attracted to this carbon, which is positive. And uh, the lone pair is going to get attracted to it. The double bond electrons are going to get repelled. So what happens is that the water molecule gets attracted to the carbon atom and uh, the, it gifts its lone pairs to carbon. And the electrons, the double bond, they get repelled. So you, the oxygen gets a negative charge. In the next step, the negative charge of the oxygen comes back and reforms the double bond. And as the negative charge comes back, the Cl is pushed away and it breaks away. So the Cl minus one gets pushed away. Next step is the Cl minus one comes back and ends up stealing one of the hydrogens from this uh, water molecule over here. Uh, and it ends up forming HCl. And you're left with OH over there. So this is the entire mechanism that water comes in, uh, brings its lone pairs to the carbon positive, which is strongly positive. Double bond electrons get repelled. You got a negative charge on the top. The negative charge comes back and the Cl gets knocked out. So this is only for acyl chloride, right? Huh, this is for acyl chloride. You have to... You have to know. Uh, you have to know the mechanism of this reaction. So this is just hydrolysis. Remember, revise this. You should know the mechanism of acyl chlorides. That's nucleophilic addition elimination. You should know the mechanism of uh, of uh, halogenoalkenes, which is SN one SN two. The first one doesn't hydrolyze at all. No reaction whatsoever. So this question is about is saying by considering the two steps in the mechanism of the reaction. Complete the table by placing a tick in each row, indicate the types of bonds that are broken formed during the mechanism. So, sigma bond, wait a second, Bro bonds broken. So, how many bonds are broken in this mechanism that we have written down? Can't get where's the mechanism? This one. First step, the double bond breaks, right? Second step, the CL breaks. Now the double bond is a pi bond. So the pi bond breaks. Second step, the CL breaks away. So that's a sigma bond. That's a single bond. So you've got both types of bonds that are broken. It's uh, both sigma and, and pi. Next step, how many bonds are formed or what type of bonds are formed? Um, I think only sigma bonds are formed. The first bond that is formed is between carbon and oxygen. That's a single bond. That's a sigma bond. Uh, what other bonds are formed? Um, the pi bond is again forms back again. So we can say the pi bond forms as well in the next step. The double bond reforms. So I guess we've got a we've got both sigma and pi bonds forming as well in the mechanism. And let me so I'm just going to repeat this. First step, the double bond pi bond is breaking, while a sigma bond at the same time is forming. Second step, the pi bond double bond is forming back again. And a sigma bond is being broken. So, uh, so pi bond broken, pi bond reforms. Uh, sigma bond formed, sigma bond being broken. So I, I, hopefully I'm interpreting the question correctly. So that's fine. That's both sigma and pi bonds being broken, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. 
So now, next one is an addition polymer made from two uh, different alkene monomers. It's called a copolymer. A section of the polymer copolymer is shown. Um, so it's this one. And uh, he's saying draw the structure of the two alkene monomers, which produce uh, this copolymer. So uh, just look at the repeat units. That's one. That's the other one. Uh, get rid of the bonds between them. Uh, not between them, between the between the units. Uh, remove the linkages, put the double bond back again. So you've got one polymer, which is, it's got two H's. It's got a CST and it's got a CL. And you've got another one, which is a uh, serial bond C. And it's C2H5. One second, let me just check CS3. And you've got H's. Basra, just a second. You're talking about this one, right? Okay, why does the seal break away? What happened was oxygen is more electronegative. So initially, when the lone pair come in and attack the carbon atom, the double bond electrons, they get repelled, right? So one of the double bonds, like the pi bond, it breaks away and it accumulates on the oxygen atom. But the bond is still there. While at the same time, CL wants to lose electrons. So what happens next is if those electrons come back, the CL electrons would easily, because the bond is still there. It's got a negative charge accumulated over here, but the carbon and oxygen bond has not been broken completely at, at least. So what happens is if those electrons, they come back, the negative charge is going to repel these electrons and the CL wants to take away electrons. So eventually the CL takes the electrons. So Uba's initial target, initially oxygen is more electronegative. So when the electrons come in, the electrons get pushed towards oxygen atom. But the bond does not completely break. Now, um, I said, these are your two copolymers. Explain why polyamides normally biodegraded, biodegraded more readily than polyalkenes. That's a very common question. So the reason why this biodegrades or amide linkages, I'm just going to write the reason over here, that an amide link is this one. So it's highly polar. It's highly polar and it's got lone pairs. It's got a carbon, which is positive. It's got an oxygen, which is very negative. So it will attract water molecules very, 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 very strongly. Like, like a, an oxygen, a water molecule will be with its lone pairs will be attracted to this carbon, which is positive. So which is why amide linkages are very susceptible to hydrolysis. Uh, similarly, they could be a water molecule with its positive H getting attracted to the lone pairs on. So eventually this thing will break in the middle. Um, the OH will get attached to, on this carbon atom and the H over here will get attached to this N over here. So hydrolysis is very possible because it's very polar. And why do carbon chains not break? Why, what happens in a polyalkene? That you've got a bunch of carbon chains and those carbon chains are non-polar. So they don't attract water molecules. It's just a one mark question. We'll just check how that is stated. Uh, okay, carbon-carbon bonds are non-polar and cannot be hydrolyzed. Polyamides can be broken down by hydrolysis because they're highly polar. That's, that's the one mark answer reasoning for this. Moving to the next one. And remember polyesters, polyamides, uh, they're all very, very biodegradable. Polyalkenes, uh, or addition polymers, they are the ones that are non-biodegradable or unreactive. So you've got this reaction, you have to draw this one. So I've got a, I've got a ketone over here. So how do you turn a ketone into uh, an alkene? Uh, this is AS organic. So how do you turn a ketone into an alkene? You've got a ketone over here. You're going to reduce it. You're going to turn it into an alcohol. So you go all the way in a BH4, LLH4, turn it into an alcohol. And that alcohol can then be dehydrated to form an alkene. So it's uh, the only sensible path is this one, this one, and then go this way. So we are going to, so we are going to turn this into an alcohol first. And let's say this is carbon 3Hs. And then, uh, 
the OH would be lost and the AH would be lost from the neighboring carbon atom. And on adjacent this carbon atoms. अच्छा इब्राहिम क्या क्वेश्चन था ये सेकंड स्टेप जो हो रहा है एल्डिहाइड टू अल्कोहल तो दिस इज अ ट्रेडिशन है नहीं दिस इज दिस कीटोन टू अल्कोहल दैट्स दैट्स रिड्यूस रिडक्शन इट्स एन एबीएच 4 एलएलएच 4 ठीक है अच्छा जी ठीक है अच्छा सो दिस इज एन एबीएच 4 दैट्स रिडक्शन एंड दिस वन इज डिहाइड्रेशन इट्स अ कंसंट्रेटेड H2SO4 प्लस हीट or hot concentrated H2SO4. So for reduce the identity of compounds H and uh, draw its structure, we did that. Suggest the re- uh, we have to suggest the reasons for step number one as well. So what is step number one? That is, okay, you had a benzene, or usme aake, there's a carbon chain that's getting attached to it, uh, an acyl chain that's getting attached to it. So that is acylation. Okay, acylation and alkylation. You need ALCLC as a catalyst. and you need an acyl chloride it's it's a cl bond o and a cl and the carbon is positively very very positively charged the benzene is going to get attracted to this very strong carbon which is positive okay so so that one is is acylation you need a al cl3 as a catalyst and that is an example of electrophilic substitution uh so that's question number 9 Uh, move back uh so this one is nmr so that's i said this one uh, you got a whole question on, on analytical chemistry let me just open the notes one second um so this one mass spectrum mn plus 1 uh used f- that it has five carbon atoms so figure out whether it's got five carbon atoms what's the formula it's a uh, it's 100 over 1.1 you just have to remember this formula it's m plus 1 divided by m so if you do this it's going to be uh, 100 over 1.1 into uh, m plus 1 which is 1.25 and that's going to be divided by 22.65 that's so so what are what are we getting for this सही complete the equation to show the fragmentation of x to produce this peak so you had c5h10o2 so what could be 57 uh, we don't know what c5h10o2 is but the what happens in mass spectrum that you ionize it when you ionize it it breaks down into pieces one of the pieces 57 so what could be 57 uh what could be 57 it's uh i mean you just have to make a wild guess like let's say i start off with cst maybe there's a cst so that's uh, 15 uh let's say there is a carbon and it's got uh, so 15 plus 12 is 27 uh let's say there's an oxygen as well 27 plus 16 is what 43 carbon that's 43 right so how can i get 57 that's the question sir i need two molecules to mila ke 57 karna नहीं 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 मास स्पेक्ट्रम हैज अ पीक दो मॉलिक्यूल्स को नहीं वो कह रहे हैं कि दो फ्रैगमेंट्स बनाने तो दो बनाने ना वन ऑफ द फ्रैगमेंट इज अ 57 लाइक यू आर गेटिंग अ डिटेक्शन एट 57 दैट मींस देयर इज अ शो द फ्रैगमेंटेशन ऑफ एक्स टू प्रोड्यूस दिस पीक कि द मॉलिक्यूल ब्रेक्स अप आई मीन यू हैड यू मतलब इफ आई शो यू द काइंड ऑफ फ्रैगमेंटेशन वाला जस्ट वन सेकंड 
ठीक है वट दे वट दे मीन इज इज द फ्रेगमेंटेशन पार्ट ऑफ सेकेंड अच्छा वट दे मीन इज दैट यू हैड दिस इंटायर मॉलिक्यूल now it has broken down into pieces smaller pieces one of the piece has a mass of 57 so we are looking uh, so we are identifying trying to identify okay, what it breaks down into that you are getting 57 is that clear so guess kar what is 57 uh, let's say i have i know c o o h is 45 so let's let's go with that that's 45 uh what is 45 plus uh one more carbon that's that's going did they tell us what this compound is we just know that it's got five carbon atoms so that is the only information that we are aware of we don't even know what the structure is so i just need to figure out uh, how many carbons uh, or i'll just do simple math i just want to make 57 i've got carbon 12 uh, i've got hydrogen and i've got oxygen which is 16 16 into 2 gives me 32 right uh so 32 plus uh if i subtract quicker it try 32 57 so if i subtract uh 32 i get 25 right so what could be 25 25 is uh can't be one carbon atom uh let's say i, I reduce the number of oxygens theek hai so uh if i remove so i need to make make up 41 so oxygen so two oxygens two carbons or ek hydrogen makes up 57 acha uh, so two carbons one hydrogen two oxygen and two two oxygen acha uh, so the only problem with this one is that uh, the fragment needs to be a sensible fragment like when you do fragmentation Uh, the bonding of fragmentation has to be kind of correct like uh, like i mean they can be making fewer bonds like you're bro- breaking it into pieces right uh, but the number of bonds should not exceed the the i mean if oxen makes two bonds it should be making two bonds right so if i have two carbons right and you're saying that it's got uh, two oxens as well so maybe there's uh, one oxen over here and uh, maybe there's another oxen which is uh, over here and there's only one h so that is you're saying that's giving you 57 do we have any other option of 57 apart from this because that kind of looks like a very weird fragment it's ch3 think that makes a lot more sense ch3 because the the reason i'm saying that cannot be possible is because the entire molecule is breaking up into two pieces right so for example i've got a molecule i'm i'm just saying that why this this is going to be wrong or what's my logic behind that the reason i'm saying that is that if i break a molecule into two pieces any molecule um uh, the two fragments will have incomplete structures but it's not like if i break it over here it's not going to be this incomplete like this one feels that something has been broken off from a number of places over here as well and over here as well so if i'm just breaking it into two pieces so only two of the atoms like in one fragment only one of the atom will have a missing bond or something like that is that, is the idea clear ji sir mari yahan pe bina this this oxygen has incomplete bonds as well so when you break a molecule into two pieces i mean the rest of the bonds are going to be complete except for 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 one or two places uh this this structure is too incomplete to be a fragment similar to this one so what theek hai bazga that's uh, cstco that's uh, if that gives you i mean that makes a lot more sense like the molecule bro- broke at this point so that's uh, 15 plus uh, 14 that's 29 plus uh, another carbon that's 41 plus that that is exactly 57 so that makes a lot more sense because this the fragment is a lot more complete in this case theek hai so so make sure it's a, it's a very minor point but remember this that your fragment or your piece cannot be so incomplete uh, structure wise or bonding wise that would indicate that it's breaking at many different points uh, but if the molecule is just breaking into two pieces it would at best be breaking at one point like over here it's breaking at this point acha what's the other piece then if one is 57 
what is the leftover piece? Uh, you've got, uh, uh, you've already added three carbons over here. So the remaining molecule will have two carbons. And out of 10 hydrogens, there are five over here. So it's going to have uh, five hydrogens. And out of the two oxygen, it's going to have one oxygen. So that's the other part. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, the next one is state the use of, uh, well, hopefully you really bought clear, okay? like your fragment, just remember this. Uh, if the molecule breaks into two pieces, if I break this into two pieces, the molecule is not going to have, uh, it, I mean, every time the fragments are going to be incomplete structures, but they can't be that incomplete if it's breaking down into very few pieces. I just state the use of TMS and CDCLC and NMR spectroscopy. So TMS is used as a reference. Okay, that's a that's a, uh, a TMS is used because uh, I mean you don't have to go into detail about TMS. TMS is just used as a reference. Like when you do NMR spectroscopy, lots of hydrogen protons are resonating. There's going to be a point in the on there's going to be a point in the frequency spectrum where the TMS would be resonating. Okay, there's going to be a peak of TMS. So the so TM TMS stands for? Tetramethylsilane. Okay, it's this molecule over here. It's a silicon with three CH3s. Okay, this is, you don't need to go into details about this. This is just used as a reference for NMR spectroscopy. Okay, when you do NMR spectroscopy, all these hydrogen protons are resonating at different frequencies, right? Uh, for example, in this case, this is these three hydrogen protons would be resonating at frequency F1, right? Now, TMS is used as a reference because you, you use the term chemical shift when you... So your hydrogen protons would be resonating at frequency, let's say, F1, right? So when you talk about chemical shift, chemical shift is this thing. It's basically how shifted are your hydrogen proton frequencies compared to TMS. To get the data booklet frequencies, you don't use the word frequency, you use the word chemical shift. So your protons will be shifted compared to TMS. So, so that is it. I mean, uh, so you use the word chemical shift, delta parts per million, and uh, that is in reference to TMS. So TMS is used as a reference. That's about it. Uh, you don't have to go into that much detail, but you, did you get the idea of what uh, what does it mean? Yes, sir. And CdCl3. CdCl3 is a deuterated solvent. Now, water is a very bad solvent. Like these molecules will not be like floating in thin air in a vacuum, they would be in some sort of solvent when you do NMR spectroscopy. Now, deuterated solvents are solvents which do not resonate because uh, they've got deuterium in them. Uh, deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen that does not resonate. So you don't want your solvents to resonate uh, because you're, you're trying to analyze this molecule. So you want these hydrogen protons to resonate. You don't want uh, water molecules to resonate. So which is why you use a uh, you think of this as kind of an inert solvent when it comes to NMR spectroscopy. So, that's uh, what, are, what are they saying? That the first part. Uh, that's it. The first one is reference, and the other one is is, a, is used as a solvent or a deuterated solvent. Do you get that part clear? Clear again. So the next one is proton NMR. So I'll just uh, give you a quick recap of what proton NMR was. Okay, in proton NMR, you had, where's proton NMR? I said, this was the idea of proton NMR that you had, I mean, forget the details. The basic idea was that your hydrogen protons would resonate and the protons that were in the same environment would resonate at the same frequency. These three would resonate at the same frequency, F1. These two would resonate at the same frequency F2. This would resonate at frequency F0. As long as the chemical environment is the same, they would resonate at the same frequency. These three hydrogens, these three hydrogens, they both would resonate at the same frequency. This one would resonate at a different frequency. This would resonate at a different frequency. And this one is different from the other one. So it would resonate at a different frequency. That's about it. 
and there was a splitting pattern. Okay, the second rule was you had a splitting pattern. The splitting pattern was that depended on the neighboring carbon atom. So if the neighboring carbon atom had no hydrogen, that's a singlet. One hydrogen, that's a doublet. Two hydrogen, triplet. Three n plus one rule. So these are the two basic ideas. Now, and the height of the peak gives you the number of protons. So over here, this one has three protons. They're talking about this molecule. So that is probably a CS3. Uh, probably a CS3, C with three Hs. This one has three protons as well. That's also kind of a CS3. This one is going to be CH2. It's got two protons. Sir, but second, it's second level ka height over you know, I mean, both of them are... I said, well, height... Protons, said, like in, it has a... I mean, because because in. it has split up. It's the same exact height. If I add up this... Okay, sometimes it's res resonating on the middle frequency. Sometimes it's resonating at a slightly higher frequency. Sometimes it's resonating at a slightly lower frequency. It's a triplet peak, right? So, which is why the absorption at a particular, because it's three frequencies now, right? Uh, sometimes it's slightly higher, sometimes it's slightly lower, sometimes it's the middle one, right? So at any particular frequency, the absorption is going to be lesser because it's now divided over three different three different peaks. Is that clear? Indeed. Otherwise, the area of the of these two would be exactly the same. Okay. Similarly, this these two have exactly the same area, except that it has to, it has split up into four smaller peaks. If you have a triplet, what does that mean? Uh, what what does the neighborhood look like? Neighboring carbon atom has how many hydrogens? Two, two hydrogens. So neighbor is CH2. I mean, it's it's going to have CH2. Uh, singlet means neighbor has what? Zero. You get no H atoms. Zero. So this one is a quadruplet, so that means neighbor has... Three. Neighbor is basically CS3. And this one also neighbor has. As it's got it's got zero H's. As if from this, one thing is clear that CS3 has a neighbor which is CS2, and CS2 has a neighbor which is CS3. So that is kind of clear. You've got we've got a CS3, and we've got a we've got a CS2. Uh, that thing is clear. Um, so one, one is CH3, the other one is, the other one is CH2. Uh, then we can, uh, what we can do is, uh, deduce the part of the molecule that produces a peak at, remember the formula of this molecule is C5, H10 and O2, I think. Um, deduce the part of the molecules with peaks. So we can refer to the data booklet in this case, because I don't think we can derive any other information from this. So I'll just open up the data booklet. And if I have a look at the data booklet, so okay, chemical shift. Infrared, uh, this is carbon spectro, uh, this one. So this one, first one, 0.9 to 1.7, that is uh, the alkane type, right? So if I go back, this is 0.9 to 1.7 range that is the alkane environment or basically it's a carbon chain so so it is this one it's this cs3 right because it's right next to a cs2 so that's that's the alkane type environment uh then i said that this cs2 that's around that's around 3.5 or something right so 3.5 what is the chemical shift at 3.5 you get 3.5 when you get 3.5, when you're this one, when you're right next to an oxygen. So that means that CH2 is right next to a single oxygen. Okay, so that 3.2 to 5, that 3.2 to 4, something in between that. Ours is 3.5. So it's this one next to an oxygen. So that makes sense because we do have oxygen. So this CH2 is right next to an oxygen. So I'm going to put that oxygen over here as well. Because this CH2 is the, this one is the same one. TK, is that clear? Yeah. 
There are other ranges as well, 3.5. Again, if you look carefully, 3.5 also comes off. It, it also pays for an alcohol. But I can clearly rule that out because I know that it's a, it's a CH2 proton, not, a, not an alcohol proton. Is that clear? Okay. Yes, I know it, I'm talking about a CH2. I'm not talking about an OH, right? So which is why I went for this one. And I, I ruled out CL as well because the molecular formula did not have a CL. As I'm moving on, uh, let's talk about this one. There's a CH3 and it's at 2.2. So I know it's a CH3 and the neighbor has no H atoms, right? So that means it's this one. It's uh, 2.2, right? CH3 next to a C double bond O. And the neighbor has no hydrogen protons. So this neighboring carbon atom has no hydrogen protons, right? So I figured that out as well as that this one is C double bond O. So I know that there's a CH3 and I am, it's right next to a, to a serial bondo. Now the last thing that is left is a CH2. And that is a singlet as well. Now I have no place to put that CH2 except, I mean, there's only one room available for that CH2 because it's a singlet. And there's only one place for that. And that is this middle part over here. Right, I mean, there, there's no other room for it. And that makes a singlet as well because the neighboring carbons, uh, you've got an oxygen over here and a carbon over here. So the neighborhood, neighborhood has no hydrogen protons, TK. Is that clear? Yes. So we've been able to figure out uh, this particular molecule. And uh, you can just go and quote the values over here. So uh, I'll just double check this. Okay, we had, we actually, did we get it wrong? Maybe this one. This thing, it's this one. Uh, Neem, we got it right. They've just written it the other way around. It's CH3, serial bond O, CH2, then a single O, then CH2, CH2. So, so we got it right. It's the same one. We just wrote it left to right. They wrote it right to left. That's it. Now, when reacted with alkaline aquacidine, a yellow precipitate produces. So it is going to produce a yellow precipitate because alkaline or iodoform test, there's a CH3 right next to C double bond O. So TK, that's, that is going to produce a yellow precipitate. Use this information to suggest a structure of X. I mean, we already did. So that's fine. TK, is this clear? Yes, sir. ट्रिपलेटर <laughs> I figured out, uh, okay, this one is a quadruplet, so the neighbor must be CH3. So I figured out the CH2 is right next to a CH3, the CH3 is right next to a CH2. So they're, they're together. So that's the first part that I figured out, right? That the CH3 and CH2s are together. Then I opened the data booklet. I figured out uh, that this is the alkane type. So this I already figured out that it's right next to a CH2. This I figured out that at 3.5, it must be next to an oxen. So what data booklet says? So I figured out that must be next to an oxen. This CST at 2.2, I figured out was next to a cedal bond O, so I put a CST, made it next to a cedal bond O. See, now, cedal bond O being uh, data booklets. Say, haan, data, what data booklets? Na? Ye, okay. jo tha na, wo phir tha, hai? That was ke, when I figured out that there's CS3, CS2, CS2 is next to an O, there's a CST that, that is next to a cedal bond O. The only missing place left is the middle part over here, that's it. So that CS2 would probably end up over here. Okay. Because there's no other option. That's the only place that's left. 
सो वी सर तो आपने केस 2 को मतलब आई मीन एंड में क्यों नहीं लगाया और ये ऑक्सीजन और कार्बन डबल बॉन्ड आउट नहीं एंड में कैसा लगा था ये तो क्लियर था कि CH3 इज राइट नेक्स्ट टू अ सीरियल बॉन्ड और राइट जी सो दैट मींस द CH3 इज ऑलवेज एट द एंड राइट and i knew that there's a cst which is next to ch2 cst is next to ch2 and i figured out that the ch2 is next to an oxen so ch2 is next to an oxen so ends are already mm-hmm. full i mean there's no room for anything getting attached on the ends is that clear j aur pehla cst to theek hai hamare paas kahan se hai pehla cst kahan se hai hamare paas nahi ye wala j Nee, there were three H's, huh? so I said that that was CS three probably, right? And it was a triplet peak, so I figured out that the neighbor has CS two, right? So, so this one was CS three with the neighborhood neighbor that is CS two, right? Clear? Oh, cha cha, J J J. Then I figured out that this is CS two because it's two hydrogens, and the neighbor is CS three, so it's this CS two, right? And the neighbor is CS three, right? And I figured out based on the value over here, three point five. Also figured out that it is next to an oxen. So we'll be again. So the only missing place is the middle part over here. That's it. The last one that was that was this one. Okay, the very last one is this one. So I I I had no other option ex- except to put a CH two right in the middle. I mean, this one was the only missing part, right? Yeah. So next one, you've got uh, you've got the saying that there's an ester C five H ten O two and the proton in M R W contains only two peaks. The relative area of these peaks are nine ratio one. So when it's nine ratio one, that means that kind of indicates that there must be three C S threes because nine hydrogen protons in the same environment, right? How can you have nine hydrogen protons in the same environment? That means that there must be Three CS threes that are exactly in the same environment. Is the idea clear? That's the only way nine hydrogens could be in the same environment. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. I said then. Uh, so that's four hydrogens, right? Four carbons. Sorry. And then you're going to have uh, you're left with how many carbons? You're left with. Uh, he sa- he said that it's an ester, so we have to look for that. Uh, so I have to make an make it an ester. So. I'm going to do just that. Okay, that's my ester link, and uh, that's four carbon atoms. That's the fifth one, right? So I'm done. It's I've run out of carbon atoms. So that's about it. Now the only issue. So this one is going to have nine ratio one because nine hydrogen protons would be resonating at the same frequency. Let's call that f one. And there's going to be one hydrogen proton that would be resonating at a different frequency. Let's call that f two. Now there's only one issue left, and that single that issue is. Okay, I could have drawn the ester the other way around as well. Like like the serial bond O could be over here, and the oxen could be on the other side. But is the idea clear? I could have, I could have drawn this ester link. The other way around as well. Double bond O on this side and oxen on this side. Now I don't think that in the question they've given us any information to suggest which way the ester is. Is that clear? Right, so I'll, I'll just check the marking scheme. They probably accept. I don't think there's any information there. Okay, I would know okay, which direction the ester is facing. So I'll just uh, so hopefully they'll accept both of them. Uh, So they're talking about this one. I mean, it's the same molecule. Like, if you look carefully, it's a. Uh, but the question is, uh, it's C with three CHTs, and there is eight C. So they've actually chosen this one, the other one, the the one that we drew earlier. They've said that this is the ester. No, sir, ये वाला choose किया. नहीं ये वाला. Well, it's H C O N O, right? It's it's H C O N O, and then C with three C S Ts, right? So if you look over here, it's uh it's H C O O, and then C with three C S Ts. So it's H C. So so the end carbon atom only has one H. So it's uh it's this one. It's H C O O, and C with three C S Ts. 
तो क्वेश्चन है वाई डिड चूज दिस पॉन्स एंड आई नो आंसर फॉर दैट प्रोटोन इनमें स्पेक्ट्रम डब्ल्यू कंटेन्स ओनली टू पीक्स फाइन द रिलेटिव एरिया ऑफ दिस पीक्स आ आर इन द रेशियो डिड दे से एनीथिंग अबाउट डब्ल्यू एनीवेयर डू वी हैव अ डब्ल्यू समवेयर नेम नो मेंशन ऑफ डब्ल्यू एनीवेयर ये वाज द प्रीवियस वन W is an ester. The proton contains only two peaks, so fine. The the other one also contains two peaks. A nine ratio one that would work for the other one. I'm pretty sure the other one is also acceptable because there's no reason for it not to be acceptable. Okay, is that clear? I I don't have any other information that's given in the question to decide in what direction the ester is facing. Right? Is that clear? suggest a structure of v so i just want to make it chiral and i want to make it a carboxylic acid so i'm going to make it a carboxylic acid first i'm going to put an h over here all four sides need to be different so what else can i have uh, if i want to make this uh, so I've, i'm left with the uh, three carbon atoms so i can put one carbon atom over here and two carbon atoms on this side right so ch2 CH3 and I can have C so all four groups are different, and that I think is five carbon atoms, ten hydrogens, and there are two oxygens. So that's that is chiral. So that is my structure of of this thing. ठीक है? Is that clear? Yes. Let's see. So we've got another organic question. So. uh benzene can be converted into cyclohexane uh fine uh type of reaction that's in uh, it for the reagents and conditions that's an addition reaction you basically hydrogenating it nickel plus plus h2 gas that is what is happening bond angle in benzene that is 120 degrees and bond angle in cyclohexane that's 109.5 degrees this one is carbon is making four bonds right while in benzene the carbon is sp2 hybridized it's got a it's got a p orbital delocalized p orbital and the angles are 120 degrees so explain your answer uh probably that this is sp2 trigonal planar this cyclohexane kya hota hai alkane hota hai that's that's simply such a hexane Okay, uh -huh. that's, that's simply simply an alkane with the uh, which is cyclic, right? So the carbon is, but it's just a cyclic alkane. As I say, we're going to say that it's trigonal planar, and this one is uh, sp three, and it it is, it has an angle, it's tetrahedral. Okay, the three lines. I'll just check. Okay, what the what they're looking for in this one? It's. Uh, it's a uh, benzene on that part i said the, the explanation was that pi bonds are transformed into sigma bonds i could have never thought about that explanation so state the bond angles explain your answers theek yeah, that makes sense that previously in benzene the carbons were all trigonal planar each carbon atom was making three bonds and there was a p orbital so the hydrogen came in and it hydrogenation happened so the so the fourth electron that was delocalized okay let me show you what benzene looks like and let me show you what uh, copy I said so. So they weren't looking for a very 
in-depth explanation. We're just looking for okay, your pi bonds are gone and they've changed into sigma bonds when they formed alkenes. So that was that was about it. Uh, I'll just I'll just show you quickly. Okay, this is what a benzene. Is benzene. So this is this is what a benzene looks like, and every carbon atom has uh, has p orbitals, and hydrogen comes in and bonds with the carbon atom. So now it's making four bonds. So that's why it's tetrahedral. That's it. So, anyways, it was a very general explanation for this one. And you've got uh, when benzene reacts with SO three, benzene self so this thing is produced. State the the mechanism of this reaction is similar to that of nitration of benzene. Uh, concentrated H2SO4 is used in initial step to generate the electrophile as shown. So he says that the mechanism is exactly the same as nitration. So what happened in nitration? What happened in nitration was that uh, that as an intermediate, the SO3 will come and it's going to join with the with the benzene. And the benzene would become electron deficient. Uh, that is what is going to happen. And in the next step, this HSO4 minus one with its lone pairs is going to attract this H and the H is going to give back its electrons and would leave the benzene. So the electron cloud would become complete again. So, so this was the mechanism of uh, Kanye. I said this nitration of benzene, where's the nitration of benzene? This is the mechanism. The NO2 plus one comes in, steals an electron from the benzene electron cloud. And in the next step, the H gives its electrons back as H is a four minus one comes in. So we drew the exact same mechanism. And write an equation to show the H2SO4 catalyst being reformed. So it's going to be HSO4 minus one. That is grabbing the H person that's coming from benzene. It's going to form H2SO4 back again. Is that clear? Okay. Sir, HSO4, uh, I mean, HSO4 negative. Whoa, okay, sir, but I can't get it. He's talking about nitration of benzene. So you have to remember nitration of benzene. Okay, what happened in nitration of benzene? That you had H2SO4 as a catalyst. HNO3 reacted with it, produces the electrophile NO2 plus 1, and the HSO, H2SO4 turned into HSO4 minus 1. So the first step was NO2 plus 1 comes in, grabs one of the P orbitals bonds with the carbon atom, ends up making four bonds with the carbon ends up making four bonds. And the next step, the HSO4 minus 1 is reformed it grabs the h the h leaves the electron with the benzene and the electron cloud becomes complete again and the h plus one goes and joins with the hso4 minus one to form h2so4 okay oh, so, yeah. so it's the same thing it's uh no2 plus one in this case they're using so3 h plus one so it's the same thing the so3 h plus one uh goes and uh so the SO3H plus one goes and binds with the benzene. And the next step, HSO4 minus one over here is going to. So it's the exact same nitration mechanism except for SO3H. I say, Yahape is saying that uh, acid can be prepared from benzene sulfonic acid. State the reagents and conditions uh, and name the mechanism for this reaction. So, so all that is happen happening is alkylation. When does alkylation happen? You need a you need a chlorobenzene, like uh, like you need a carbon, and that particular carbon must be bonded to a Cl. So that carbon is positively charged, and it goes and gets attracted to the benzene. So you need a chloroalkane. So the carbon chain would be C12. It's going to be C12 H25, and it's going to have a Cl somewhere. So that one of the carbon has a slight positive charge. And you would, uh, the mechanism is electrophilic substitution. And conditions are, uh, you need a catalyst, ALCL3, that's used as a catalyst. Clear? 
Nee, that's electrophilic. Nee, benzene reactions are... The hydrogen are, has been removed. Yeah. Benzene reactions are all electrophilic yeah. substitution. Okay, every time NH is going to be removed. So you have nitration and chlorination and bromination. Okay, you need, uh, you need to know that there's, there's alkylation. The carbon is positive because of chlorine and there's acylation. Carbon is positive because it's, it's part of the acyl group. So... One second. I said next one. Okay, let's uh, go with the next one. Uh, K ka question. It's K two. So K A two. You have to write the expression for K A two. It's uh, it's just a K C product concentration divided by reactant concentration H plus one. SO4 minus 2 and divide by uh, HSO4 minus 1 concentration. Uh, so H2SO4 is considered a strong acid. Where is it? Huh? Again, again, let's suppose HSO4 solid, I mean, solid form. So we don't write it, right? Yes, but K is not the same. But acid, yeah. ke, ke, phir, phir, you won't write dissociation constant K. Remember, K is for a very specific reaction where you have an aqueous acid and it ionizes and produces aqueous ions. Clear? So the term K specifically applies to this particular reaction. It can't be solid. I mean, you wouldn't call that K. I Ni Ka is one version of Kc. It's the ver version of Kc which applies to this one. Okay. You just can't call... Kc to solid ho Haan, Kc is the most general form. You can apply Kc. I mean, this is Kc of this reaction. Okay. Kc just means products over reactants. So you can apply Kc anywhere. Ka is one very specific form of Kc. Okay. I say H2SO4 is considered a strong acid, whereas uh, this one is considered a weak acid. It suggests how the magnitude of the acid dissociation constant for stage one compares to stage one is strong. So that means Ka is large. So K1 is going to be very large because it's a strong acid compared to K2. Because K2, he told us that it's a weak acid. I mean, he just mentioned it, that it's considered a weak acid. So K ki value hai where mm -hmm. greater the K, isme jaise yahan pe K hai, so you said ki greater the K stronger the acid. Ha. Ek K hai mein saath hai jisme greater the K a weaker. Weaker, weaker the kya? Yeah. I mean, it's something inversely proportional. Yehi chiz ho rahi hai lekin. Well, mera hi khayal uh, wo possible hai. Yeh uska nahi. Equilibrium constants ki baat karein, so that means. Assets can do yeah. I mean, it's, it's not it's not possible. Even for KSP, KSP is about solubility. So greater the KSP, more soluble it's going to be. It's going to produce more ions. K stability is the same thing. Greater the K stability, the more products you're going to form. There's going to be more more like an exchange. So I think uh, inversely to Kabi Yoga. You've got benzoic acid, it's a weak acid. So you're, you're given the pH, you have to find K. What is K? K is, uh, it's uh, the general equation for K is H plus one squared divided by the acid concentration. Like, like these two ions would be produced in the same quantity. So it's H plus one squared divided by the acid concentration. So you can, you can use the same general expression for this one. So you're given you're given uh, the concentration of benzoic acid that's 0 0.0250, and you're given H plus one concentration. You're given the pH. If the pH is 2.9, what is the H plus one concentration? The H plus one concentration, if you take the inverse anti-log of the negative minus 2.9, it's going to come out as 10 to the power minus 2.9. Tickets. So this is 10 to the power minus 2.9. So. So it's 10 to the power minus 2.9 and it's being squared as well. So what do you get K in this case?
This is a care cluster. What are you, what are we getting? Uh, one second. That's a six point three four into ten to the minus five. Tika. So we're getting six point three four into ten to the minus five. I'll just double check. Uh, by the market scheme. So six point three four. Uh, times ten to the minus five. Uh, they've given it up till two significant figures. Uh, so you just uh. But while th these values were actually three significant figures, so. I, I'm sure 6.34 is fine. So here, let's uh, let's continue with this uh, next time. Can anyone remind me which paper we are on? And this is we've done seven, eight, nine, right? So one second, I'll just look at it. So we did. Seven, eight, and nine. So let's continue next time then. Okay. So I have a question for uh, you. Sir, the rate equation that we have. It's like that we have a rate determining step. There are two equations. Let's suppose we have equation one or the equation one amount of us rate determining step, which is of order, let's suppose one or do say equation. I'm not sure. Just equation one is rate determining step or say order. You have to figure out one second. Not there. Ek to my pass first one second. Let's say I have an equation. This equation is always keep asking about here. अब बताओ कौन सा रेट डिटरमिनिंग स्टेप है उसने कहा स्टेप 1 इज द रेट डिटरमिनिंग स्टेप कोई भी कर लो मतलब लेट्स से लेट्स से स्टेप 2 इज द रेट डिटरमिनिंग स्टेप राइट जी ठीक कर लेते हैं हां अब मेरे को के रेशियो के हमारे पास सर रेट होते ऑर्डर होते हैं लेट्स सपोज एच आई यू तो इट्स ऑफ ऑर्डर 1 क्योंकि 1 मोल है राइट नहीं पहले तो ये हुआ ना कि ये मैंने बता दिया कि दिस इज रेट डिटरमिनिंग स्टेप राइट this is what the rate is rate is dependent on what these two this g so rate depends on uh, hio or uska jo coefficient hoga that's going to be the order theek hai 1 huh. and i minus 1 is 1 clear hai yahan ji yahan tak acha but when i say rate depends on hio hio so khud it depended on other things right it depended on, it depended on h plus 1 and io minus 1 because HIO was formed when H plus one and HIO minus one reacted, right? So I'm going to cut off HIO and I'm going to replace it with H plus one and IO minus one. You be clear? Yeah. Okay. When I say that rate depends on IO minus one, I figured out that IO minus one itself is dependent on these two things. So when I say rate depends on IO minus one, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to replace it with H2O2 and uh, and I minus one. Okay, Saro, when I total this up, it's going to be it depends on H2O2 order one. I minus one would be order two. You get a pairs twice, so that would become squared, and H plus one would be order one. TK. Okay, so here we go. Order two, this would be order one, this would be order one as well. G. नहीं ये तो मुझे समझ मैं ये कह रहा हूं कि बाकी इक्वेशंस फिर ऑर्डर 0 के होंगे 
and you let the equation for they they're not order zero oh. they just it doesn't matter okay whatever they are anything that's in the in the fast step that's order zero yani matlab wo wo matter nahi kar raha bas unko matlab unko hata do matlab order zero you can say ke any anything that's involved in the other steps that's order zero order zero means ke they're not dependent on them you you, you don't even in, order zero means ke you, बस वो इक्वेशन में नहीं है ठीक है ठीक है सर एक दूसरा क्वेश्चन इनऑर्गेनिक में मैं मतलब सिलेबस में तो ये कहीं नहीं लिखा हुआ हाँ हाँ नहीं वो ए एस का आएगा बीच में ना इतना ज्यादा नहीं आता लेकिन आ जाता है एस आ जाता है ठीक है ठीक है चलो ठीक है ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू